It's time for Dads Making a Difference, powered by First Things First. This transformative show will help you learn how to handle the stress of fatherhood, how to better relate to your child, navigate the child support system, and all things that come with being a dad. With your hosts, Reggie Madison and James Frankie Woods. Some people only see problems. And then there's people that see solutions. Dad's Making a Difference began in 2011 as a solution to a problem of men being incarcerated repeatedly for support, uh, for support, child support or for factors often related to child support. Dad's Making a Difference has grown to be a radio show and a program about helping men who are involved in the child support system and men who are involved in the system and want to spend more time with their children. You're going to hear us talk a lot about the DMD, Dad's Making a Difference program today. And if you want more information, visit firstthings.org backslash DMD or email us at DMD at firstthings.org. But today is a special day for James and I, as we have as our guest a man very dear to me who is a strong, and I mean strong part of the brain trust that didn't just see a problem, but more importantly said, let's try a solution. The pioneer for a movement of men who are working to change the narrative around fatherhood. He's an amazing husband, father, entrepreneur, community voice, and dear friend, Todd Agney. Todd, welcome, my friend. Welcome, 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 man. <laughs> well, now I want to leave because I don't want to diminish <laughs> right. any, any of that, which if you give me enough time, I'll, I'll, I'll take a shot at it. That's for sure. Gotcha. <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> really well, really well. I, I have, I, I joke, and not always, I think people should stand in line to maybe live my day. And probably, I think there are days you feel like that, and I'm sure everybody in this room, I think people get in line and, and uh, just experience what I'm experiencing, and it's 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 a great day, and uh, I wish everybody could have a piece of that. Man, wow. Yes. So, before we start talking about your day, tell right. us a little bit about you. You, your family, that kind oh, of thing. Well, so I am, I'm one of those people that, I, I'm a definition of everything that I've ever done, mm. right? And yeah, there's there's patches and security updates that come along, and sometimes there's a whole new system downloads. But um, you know, I'm still that guy that always wanted to have a family, and I do. You know, I, I have a son who's married, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, I have a daughter who's going to graduate from college, and I'm thankful for that. Um, I, I have I have a my wife has been fantastic. She's the person I always wanted to marry, and I got lucky, and and that happened. How long have I been married? Uh, well, as I like to say, more than 20, less than 30. I've been reminded, however, though, that in a year and a half, I'm going to have to change that to more than 30 and less than 40. Oh, so, wow. But we've known each other since we were in high school. We actually dated for about a month. And uh, people always say, oh, high school sweethearts. I say, no, it really was a bad experience. It was high, <laughs> it was high school sweethearts. It just didn't work <laughs> out. And uh, But we kept in touch, and obviously, you know, I grew. And, um, and so um, we've been married, and we have fought a good fight so far and had a great time doing it and, and moving into a whole bunch of different new stages. But I would say most importantly, I'm a guy that's learned how to apologize. Mm. And... and um, and I'm surrounded by a bunch of people who have accepted my apologies, right? Because you don't you don't get to do these kind of things and some of the experiences I've had in life without having to apologize. Wow. And yeah. uh, took me a long time to figure out how to apologize correctly, but I eventually got it down. And I would say nine times out of ten, you know, people accept that, and I'm able to move on to the, whatever's next. Gotcha. So. so. Our listeners are going to hear one of the reasons the program has become what it is, right? Gotcha. Like humility is a huge thing. So set the scene. All right, set the scene. What made you see the need for dads making a difference? <laughs> well, I really didn't at first. So when I first got to First Things First, I was not told that part of the programming would be going into uh, the jails and doing reentry and fathering with incarcerated people. Gotcha. Had I known that at the time, I'd, I might have walked down there and said, I, I'm not doing this. But about four months out of the job, it was mentioned that, that we were going to take the programming into the jails. And I, I said, okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm here, so I might as well figure out 
how to do this. And uh, after being in the jails for about a year, the executive director came to me and she said, you know, just little biographical information on who's in there and why they're in there. And I said, you know, I, oddly enough, because I didn't know anything. So there's a lot of guys in there that are, are there for child support. I didn't know that could happen. Right. right? Who, who knew? And um, seemed like an odd problem, but we started to play around with maybe how could we be impactful with those guys. And so I was fortunate that uh, the director sent me to Kansas City to look at some programming, sent me to Cincinnati, sent me to Washington, D.C., Baltimore. And we just never really found anything that kind of fit our vision of what we wanted to do. But we did come back with a whole bunch of tools, right? And we, so we just we put them into our – we built our tool chest, and we said, all right, we can do this, all right? And so um, – and our, our first two classes – and I, I do think about this a lot. I, I, if I could actually apologize to the first two classes, <laughs> right, I would. Because at the time, I thought, well, I've got a solution to a problem that I don't understand, right? And, and so I thought, well, we just tell the guys to pay their child support. What's this easy job? Right? You do that and you do that. Every, everything's good. I had no idea. I was so ignorant, right? I just had no idea how big the problem was. And uh, But once I understood the size of it, or at least could begin to comprehend the size of it, we began to really understand the need for the program. And... Um, I tell you, I, I would not be the guy you would hire to do this job, right? If you, I had no experience in nonprofit. At that point, I still hadn't graduated from college, and I just recently did that. I, I had never worked with people that had been incarcerated, had never paid child support. Um, I, I just wouldn't be the guy you'd hire. The, the two things that I feel like I had was I had somewhat of God has had his hands and has always had his hands on dads making a difference. And I was willing to be vulnerable mm -hmm. just to say, hey, I've been fired, right? Or I've made that mistake. I've stumbled down that road. And I think with just transparency and a, a desire not to give up, we, the program just started to take shape. And I began to understand not only is there a need for this class to talk about child support, but there's a need to talk about fathering and marriage and how are you getting along with your dad and are you eating? And I got introduced to Ruby Payne's you know, theories on, on poverty. Are, are you poor socially? Are you poor mentally? How's your vocabulary? You know, how are you feeling fi uh, physically? Do you have friendships? And, and do you have a spirit about you? And what do you believe in? And, and you start to take all of that and you say, there is a real need here to help people of all walks of life get out of poverty. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. I, think, I think I might have addressed some yeah. of the, some wow. of the question. <laughs> So yeah. that's so yeah. The light bulb was more of a dimmer, right? Yeah. It just you kept slowly churning the dimmer, and eventually, after a couple of years, I said, "There's a real need for what we're it doing." It sounds like on one end you started and realized quickly that there was a lot you didn't know. It, correct, right? But then you took advantage of what you did know, right? Such as yeah. something as simple as, like you said, "I've been fired." You know, right? We've all been fired. There, right. There's some commonality there that that has a touch point, but you know, you start out. Pay your child support, right? And and obviously that didn't go very well. That no, I, I think I even I might have screamed it once or twice just out of frustration, mm. right? Just just anger that you just wouldn't do that, not realizing that there were a whole set of sub problems that were associated with that, and uh, just mm. kind of getting to the point where all right, everybody's different, mm -hmm. everybody has a different reason or a thought process, and and we need to address that. Yeah. Mm. So how, how so how the community receive it? You know, so our partnerships, I'm sure, that exist to this day, I feel like they probably had a couple of thoughts, right? Like, okay, this is great. Um, I'm sure some people were skeptical, right? Um, I think probably most of them felt like it wouldn't be around very long, <laughs> right? Things in the nonprofit world have a tendency to kind of, you know, they crest and then they leave, Right. It's like the tides. And um, those people I felt like we had a lot of buy in from um, as far as what the general community thought. Never really gave it much thought. I knew that first things first was behind it. I knew that the people that worked there were behind it. I felt like I knew everybody on the board was behind it. And you could tell that they were behind it because we were putting money and time. And yeah. and, and I, what I believe began to happen is that. It began to work, right? 
So, hmm. so the judges would come in and talk, and it began to work. Child support came in, and that kind of began to work. And the sheriff came in, and that kind of began to work. And guest speakers that had been incarcerated before that were now um, big players in town, right? People didn't know their background, but they kind of they came in, and they dropped the shield, and they told their story, and that began to work. And so we created this momentum out of success. You know, we just kept stacking successes. I, I like to tell people, um, especially myself normally, is, all right, I did this right now. What can I stack on top of that? And what can we stack on top of that? And how do we just keep this going? How do we stack successes? And so as we started to stack successes, more people began to take notice and appreciate the program. Man, I'm just in awe. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> if I'm quiet, I'm starstruck a little bit because, I've, excuse me, I've heard so much great things about you. And if it wasn't for you, then I wouldn't be here right now because of the Dad's Making a Difference program. Uh, so just a, another question for me, what what, um, what were some lessons learned during your time as a program director there? You know, it, it's that's um, it's the question – that I, I play with still to this day, and I still use. Like, well, I learned this lesson here, and I learned that lesson there. I, I learned, again, that we talked about um, what can be a really big definition of poverty, right? And, um, and, and, how do we, and how can we address all those issues? If a guy is, is in poverty out of relationships, then how can we introduce him to more relationships? And I began to... I began to learn about why people are, you know, the way that they are. I, I give you, I used to be the guy, right? I, I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio. I grew up on a golf course and my dad wanted me to play golf every day. And it was a country club, right? And when I would get to parties, as I got older, those guys in jail, they deserve it, you know, mm. and it ought to be the worst experience that they can have. And, and I don't care. We had to lock them up and throw away the key, Right. And then I got introduced to people that were incarcerated or actually being in, in, in the jails myself. And I thought, now I tell people at parties, have you ever been to jail? I don't know what, I don't know what mm. you think goes on there, but it's, it's, it's really not what you think it is. And so now I'm, I'm the guy at the party who says, why don't you stop and listen to somebody? Why don't you take some time to get involved? Why don't, you know, this is how you feel right now. And, and uh, that was a big part of my learning curve was just listening to what's going on in people's lives and finding out, gee, this guy's not eating pizza. He comes here and he's been hungry all week, but he's not eating the pizza. I wonder what's going on. And then one of the guys told me, he goes, the sauce hurts my teeth, you know, because he hadn't had dental work done. Mm. I, it, maybe, maybe since the day he was born. And so, oh, I, okay. Instead of looking at that person and saying, boy, you really are, I can't believe that you're turning down free food. So we began to change some of the food that we would bring in. Or if I knew that a guy had that issue, we, we would work around that. If we knew that they liked Dr. Pepper instead of Coke, okay, well, let's go get cases of Dr. Pepper or Cheerwine or Sprite or 7-Up. Because they're all from different places, and they all grew up with that. And that was the first thing I wanted them to do was to have just a comfort food. <laughs> the best, <laughs> best way we could do that was buy a whole bunch of different sodas. So I just really did learn. I learned, and it's a long story. I won't tell. I just learned how not to judge people. Wow. That's good. Great. <laughs> so, so give us a good story. You know, you did this. We, I mean, Dad's Bass Making a Difference is the program has had nearly 400 graduates. Helped more than you know, more people get over 400 jobs in 12 yeah. years. You're a major, major part of that. Um, what's the story you remember from, from your time as a director? It, it, it is always the relationship, right? It's always the wedding. I, I ran into a guy um, two weeks ago in Udawal at a, at, a, at a Mexican restaurant. I knew he didn't remember my name, and I couldn't remember his name, but the bond was there instantly, right? He had come through the class, and, and you know, we hugged, and how are things going, you know? And it didn't matter that we didn't know each other's names. We just knew each other's story, right? right. And, that's, and that was kind of cool because when I walked out, my wife and the friends we were with said, who was it? And I said, I don't know. So, <laughs> you know, guy I knew from, from first things first. But um, – so it's always so we, we've been invited to weddings. We've talked about graduations. We've seen guys with their dads. The one thing that always jumped out to me is that we, 
So the graduation dinner was always really a big deal. Gotcha. Yeah. And to have a child stand up and to say in front of everybody else, I'm proud of my daddy. Mm. Right? I'm like, okay. Nope. <laughs> you, you know. Gets you every time. It gets every me time. every single time. We, uh, we've been in hospital rooms. We had a, we had a dad, unfortunately, whose child um, was submerged under a pool. Right? Had gotten out of the house and and uh, was on life support for as long as they, you know, until they had to finally make a decision and to go there and to be embraced by that family as part of the family mm-hmm. and to kind of just try to help them in any way that we could walk through that. I mean, those are all the things, you know, that always I, I, I can just see it as clear as day, those conversations with those dads about I'm going to see my son today or my daughter's doing this and, you know, we're going to go do that. And so... Those are the things that, that I always reflect yeah. on is just the personal relationship. Yeah. So how has this affected you as a man, as a father yourself? Oh, I cry a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> that's what I was waiting to hear. <laughs> you know, I think I, I cry because I think about how lucky I am. I cry a lot because I think about the guys. Uh, it's emotional for me to think about the people that we've been able to work with, about about where the program was and where it is and, and, and where it's going. Right. You know, and part of my daily routine is to remind myself that God has has blessed me. He is blessing me and he will bless Mm. me. Right. That's just that's the science. Right. That's the evidence. And so, you know, uh, I get emotional about where the program, you know, ultimately, you know, is going to be. It seems to have legs. People seem to enjoy it. It's got longevity. But um, now that I'm monologuing, what was the question? (laughs) I just say keep going, man. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. I'm a fan right now. So if y'all don't hear me today, I'm, I'm, uh, I've been waiting on this day to be here. Yeah, so. yeah my co-host is just he's like, you got it today, man. You got it, man. I am here for full support. Uh, <laughs> I, You know, one of the things that always struck me, too, is one, you talked about the fact that you could take a – you started off with a kind of a top-down approach. Mm-hmm. And you kind of shift it to – I'm going to call it bottom-ups approach. I'm not sure if that was the wording. Mm-hmm. Um and you, and you went from I'm going to tell you how to do what to do, mm-hmm. to to a totally different mindset. Talk a little bit about that. Am I, am I making sense? Oh, I well, I'm sure we'll figure it out. So, it, it uh, so the holistic idea of how do we build you up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I uh, so we rarely talked about money. That that wasn't the issue anymore. The issue yeah. was. You know, how can we help you with this relationship with this mom or this wife or this grandmother or the family, right? And, and how, how can we start to put tools in your life that allow you to make that, that, that obligation of payment, whatever that is, right? Mm-hmm. But there's, there's just, you know, why would you, we, we used to say all the time, I remember this, I'm laughing already, why would you, it's hard to write a check to somebody you can't stand, mm-hmm. Right. I gotta write you a check. I don't even like you anymore, right? It was a, this was, whole thing's been a mistake. There are people driving their cars like finally somebody yeah. sick. Yeah. Yeah. I promise you. So um, you know, and how do you, you you say you love your child? You don't ever see him. I don't understand how you can love something that you don't spend any time with. I mean, that's just me, right? I, You're right. I just okay. If this applies to me. Maybe it applies to one or two other guys in the building. So let's just start talking about how do we how do we find value in ourselves and in work and in the child and in, and, and in fixing our car and, and how do we, how do we build relationships? You know, how do we start just building towards maybe this idea of being able to fulfill all the responsibilities? And it really, that's when I think about the bottom up approach, we're going to work with you to get you to where you know, maybe things in your life, maybe you would tell somebody one day, you really ought to get in line behind me and just experience one of my days because they're so good. And, and you know, just convincing people, coming up and convincing people that they have value, they're worthy, don't be afraid to make a decision, don't be paralyzed to, to make mistakes or make decisions anymore. Just start moving forward. How are we going to – let's just take this step. And, this, and that's what I, I really – we always sort of started the class kind of slow, right? Mm-hmm. And um, and so how do we do? And I remember one of the things that we that we used to do was we had a horseshoe, right? Everybody would come in. The first two days it would be a horseshoe setup, 
And that was really try to, to try to control the conversation. All right, they think I'm in charge, and I need that for right now just to kind of get some of the behaviors and figure out who's red and who's yellow and who's blue. And, 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 and then we would be really intentional. We would, bring, we would have one session where we would show a video about guys just coming together and doing the impossible without any training, with no coordination, and just accomplishing these really huge tasks on a spur of a moment in emergency situations. But we would put all the guys at round tables. So now they would start to talk. They would open up because there's nobody in charge. This is now a group session. And we would always, we would play around with stuff like that uh, just to help them get to the point where they were confident sharing their opinions Mm. in a room. Man. And, And agreeing or disagreeing. And how do we do that with respect? Yeah. You know? I've always admired your desire to this kind of preserve fatherhood. I wish people could see. We did a video a while back, and um, he was the one. He, Todd, had a cigar, <laughs> leaning back, spewing facts or spewing <laughs> advice about being a good father, right? right? right. <laughs> oh, um, huh. Why has that been so important to you? Being a good father? Uh, just preserving kind of what fatherhood is. Because it matters. You know, I, because there's a difference in the difference, right? And, and that, that applies to, to the moms and the dads. But there's a need to have that difference. And because I see it in people's lives, all right? Look, but a lot of times I, I used to think, and probably still should, that the reason why I'm at and where I'm at and maybe the reason why somebody else is at, is at or isn't at is because I had a dad, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, had this, I had this thing. I had this... I had this guy in my life that that taught me these things and encouraged me and and uh, you know pushed me along and so I think when a dad is positive and I I, I believe that when a dad um, really wants his kids to find their path then he'll help them make that path and he won't get in the way sometimes. And so it's just so important that kids, you know, I see it all the time. I, I, I just, I see people without intact families uh, and they're just struggling. And invariably it's because they didn't have a dad there that just kind of helped them along. It just, for whatever reason, man, it makes a difference when one guy tells another guy something. Man. Wow. <laughs> and people, I guess, would argue that. And I, I you know, I, I just I just know it's true. That's why we're doing what we do. That's why right. we're doing what we're doing. So just to piggyback off that, yeah. this is something that I started for myself to give you guys a little bit of James because I want to say thank you. So today I want to give you your flowers. Okay. Today I want to say thank you, Todd. Well, today we want to say thank you, Todd, for doing what you're doing, doing what you've done to pioneer, to to to. Man, it's it's a lot of words that I can say that I have to put it in 30 minutes right now. But just to say thank you for doing what you're doing because you're a blessing to a lot of guys, over 400 guys. I've been incarcerated four times for child support. So now I can actually walk into this courtroom because of what you started. I can actually walk into the jail because of what you started. So today, I, and first things first, and dads make a difference, want to say thank you. That is, uh, that's very kind of you. I, I And I, I, it's not misplaced either. <laughs> um, that being said, I got the, I, you know I got the chance to work with the coolest people that were all dedicated for it, and they kind of put me out front. And um, it was just a willingness to do something that was right. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, right. I, I was telling Reggie the other day. I said, you know, the only thing worse than being a coward is knowing that I'm a coward from time to time. Right? It really it convicts me to say oh, I can't be a coward today about this or that. And um, I think it's cowardly. To, to judge people and to judge situations until you get in there and you go, wow, I, I wouldn't survive in this environment without somebody coming up mm-hmm. and saying something to me. And I, and, I, and I wouldn't be where I was, you know, where I'm at. Like I said, if I didn't have a, a father in my life and men in my life that, that, uh, that poured into me and, and, and uh, that, that gave me some confidence and, you know, I'm not, not totally aware of the family situations, but you just notice it when you see it. When you tell your son something, it's different than when mama tells the son it is. something. It is. It is. So All right, true. we're going to go through a few of these questions. Okay. Right. All right. What's the funnest or craziest or most outrageous thing you've ever done with your kids? All right. I, I don't have any skydiving stories. I don't, you know, we didn't, we didn't land a plane. 
You know, the things that we did that I think really mattered, we used to take the mattresses downstairs in the basement when it was when it was warm in the summer and the air conditioning was just right there and it wasn't and we would watch movies and eat popcorn and the whole family would sleep down there. Um, I taught the kids how to when the Hershey's milk chocolate um, plastic bottle gets empty and you can't pour the yep. Well, now you pour the milk in and you shake it. Shake up. And this is yep. a dad would know that. I, <laughs> yep. You know, women look at me. I'm like, well, how is how is this? Why isn't this a commercial? Um, so those, you know, and I, you know, I used to carry the kids upstairs to bed and I'd hang them upside down. I never carried them the same way. They were either a pack of, you know, they were on my shoulder as a flower bag, or I'd have them by their ankles, you know, and it just, or I'm flying them up the steps. I never carried them the same way, and it was just, you know, just trying to make some fun out of it, but. You know, I'm probably not the right person to ask, but those are the things that come now, to my mind. You've given more ideas right there you know, <laughs> than, than, than I've ever heard. Right. <laughs> so, my next question is, what makes Dash irreplaceable? Yeah, I wish I could bottle that up. I, I You know, it, it could be. This is what my kids say about me, is that they know that at the end of the day, Mom and dad are, are together, right? We're united. They they feel safer when I'm around, right? I told both my kids one time. I told them two things that still stick in my memory. First of all, I'm, I might be the only person that won't even hesitate to take a bullet for you. I will die. I will die for you. This is, this is the relationship. The other thing was one time I told them, we got in a disagreement about a decision we made with our son, and I just looked at him, and I just, it's just time to be a man. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. You're the first child, as far as I know, that I've had. And until things change, this is the answer to this, and we'll figure it out. So, I, yeah. Man, Man. It, it, it's, it's, you've left a legacy. Like, I think any person, any man wants to live a life and be able to look back and see something that outlasted him. Yeah, and for sure. Obviously, you know, great kids. I yeah. mean, great kids. Great family, but beyond those four walls, you know, there are, and we can only count maybe 400 graduates, but as we've always said, the success is not always in the graduation. Right. It is in the guys that are better because they interacted with, mm-hmm. with that's making a difference with you in some way. And, and, and so for that, um, it's easily able to say you are truly a dad who has made, made a, a difference. difference. <laughs> so that we appreciate you today. <laughs> Thank you, Todd. And it was an honor. And uh, we just encourage you all continue to make a difference. Thank you. You've been listening to Dads Making a Difference, powered by First Things First. Join us for our next episode right here.